I get asked a lot about um, the safety or lack thereof of uh, Bluetooth headphones. Mm. Um, you work on the brain, you're a brain surgeon. Sure. Um, that's valuable real estate in there. Yeah. And um, you understand about electromagnetic fields and sure. um, any discussion about EMFs immediately puts us in the category of, uh-oh, like let's get their <laughs> tinfoil hats. And yet I've been researching EMFs for a future episode of the podcast. Sure. And EMFs are a, a real thing. That's not a, a valuable statement. Everything's a real thing at some level, even an idea. But there does seem to be some evidence that electromagnetic fields of sufficient strength can alter the function of, maybe the health of, but the function of neural tissue, given that neural tissue is electrically signaling among, among itself. Sure. So um, I'll just ask this in a very straightforward way. Do you use Bluetooth headphones or wired sure. headphones? Yeah, Bluetooth. And you're not uh, worried about any kind of uh, EMF fields across the skull? No, I mean, I, I think the energy levels involved are so tiny that, uh, you know, ionizing radiation aside, we're, we're way out of the realm of ionizing radiation that people would worry about, um, you know, tumor causing EMF fields. Um, uh, even just the electromagnetic field itself, uh, as is very well described in a Bluetooth um, frequency range, it, the power levels are tiny uh, in these devices. And so, you know, we are awash in these signals, whether you use Bluetooth headphones or not. Uh, for that matter, you're you're getting bombarded with ionizing radiation in a very tiny amount, no matter where you live uh, on Earth, unless you live under huge amounts of water. Um, it's unavoidable. Uh, and so I think you just have to trust that your body uh, has the DNA repair mechanisms that it needs to deal with the constant bath of ionizing radiation that you're in uh, as a result of being in the universe and exposed to cosmic rays. Um, in terms of electromagnetic fields, it's just, it's, um, you know, the energy levels are way, way out of the range where I would be worried about this. What about heat? Um, you know, I don't use the earbuds any longer uh, for a couple of reasons. Once, as, as you know, I take a lot of supplements and I reached into my left pocket once and swallowed a handful <laughs> of supplements that included a, a Bluetooth, no. uh, a, a AirPod Pro. Um, I knew it, I swallowed it the moment after I gulped it down. By the way, folks, please don't do this. It, it was not a good idea. It, was, well, it wasn't an idea, it was a mistake. And But I could see it on my phone as registering there. Never saw it again, so I'm assuming it's no longer in my body, but... Um, uh, Anyway, there's a bad joke there uh, to be sure. Um, but it, in any event, I, I tend to lose them or misplace them. So that's the main reason. I, but I did notice when I used them that there is some heat generated there. Mm -hmm. um, I also am not convinced that plugging your ears all day long is good. There's some ventilation through the, through the sinus systems that include sure. the ears. So uh, it sounds to me like you're not concerned about the use of, of um, earbuds. But um, what about heat? near the brain. I mean, there's the, the cochlea, the, the auditory mechanisms that sit pretty close to the surface there. Um, heat and neural tissue are not friends. Sure. Um, I'd much rather get my brain cold than hot yeah. um, in terms of keeping the cells healthy and alive. Um, should we be thinking about the heat effects of some of these devices or other things? Is there anything we're overlooking? Well, think about it this way. The, uh, it, I use cars as an ana analogy a lot and, you know, mostly internal combustion engine cars. So these analogies are going to start to be uh, foreign and useless for another generation of people that grow up in the era of electric cars. But uh, using cars as a, as a platform to talk about uh, fluid cooling systems, your body has a massive distributed fluid cooling system similar to a car's radiator. Uh, you're pumping blood all around your body all the time at a very strictly controlled temperature. That blood carries, a, it's mostly water, so it carries a huge amount of the heat um, away or cold away from any area of the body that's focused uh, heating uh, or focused cooling. So you could put an ice cube on your skin uh, until it completely melts away and the blood is going to bring heat back to that area. You can put, you can stand in the sun under, uh, much more scary uh, heating rays from the sun itself that contain UV radiation uh, that's, that's definitely damaging your DNA. Um, if you're looking for things to be afraid of, the sun is a good one. No, you're talking to the guy that tells everybody to get sunlight in their eyes every morning. <laughs> but I don't want people to get burned or, or give themselves skin cancer. I, I encourage people to 
protect their skin accordingly. And and different individuals require different levels of protection from the sun. Sure. Some people do very well in a lot of sunshine, never get basal cell or anything like that. Some people, and it's not just people with very fair skin, um, a minimum of sun exposure can cause um, some issues. And sure. here I'm talking about sun exposure to the skin. Uh, of course, staring at the sun is a bad idea. I never but, recommend but thinking about that. the sun just as a heater, uh, you know, for, for a moment uh, to compare it with Bluetooth headphones. Uh, your body is very capable of carrying that heat away and, and dissipating it, you know, via sweat evaporation uh, or, um, you know, temperature equalization. So any heat that's locally generated in the ear, you know, one, there's a pretty large bony barrier there, but two, there's a ton of blood flow in the scalp and in the head in general, and definitely in the brain that's going to regulate that temperature. So I think uh, certainly there can be a tiny temperature variation, but I doubt uh, very seriously that it's enough to cause a significant problem. 